I am the one and only Susie Orman, and my goal is to make you as independent from financial advisors as possible because you are never going to be powerful in life until you are powerful over your own money. And my job is to make sure you can achieve just that. So rather than asking more from your money that it can't give you, you have to ask less of your spending habits from yourself, which means you have got to get rid of all credit card debt, all debt, total debt of car loans, mortgage debt, all debt that you have has to go. So one thing that you have to look at is if you have debt, that is your sign that you can't afford to retire. Maybe you retire from the job that you currently have, but then you have to get some side hustles or something. So my best advice to you is start living below your means, but within your needs. How do you do that? From this day forward, every time you go to make a purchase, ask yourself a question. Is this a want or is this a need? If it's a want, please don't purchase it. If it's a need, you have to buy it. It's just that simple. You know, a lot of you, when you're approaching retirement, you look at your portfolio. And usually your portfolio is this. You have a 401k, you have a 403b, a thrift savings plan if you work for the government, or whatever it may be, the military, and now you've retired. And now normally, you would then do an IRA rollover with that money. But now you're, oh my God, what should I do? I've never invested money before, really. I've just put money in every single month into these mutual funds, and now I don't know what to do. If you are going to be withdrawing money from your retirement account to pay for your everyday expenses, you have to know that you have, ready for this, everybody, at least three years of expenses in cash earning you a high interest rate or whatever the highest interest rate is that you can get. The rest, at this point in time, should really be diversified into high yield dividend paying either stocks or exchange traded funds. If you need really short term money and you want to get a higher interest rate for very short term money, right, I don't have a problem with bills. And, you know, I, I myself will put a serious sum of money protected in bills because if you're investing more than $250,000, then you really have to go to a variety of banks in order to get FDIC insurance or even credit unions. So if you have a large sum of money of a million to $3 million that you just want liquid, then I use treasury bills for that. I don't have a problem with that at all. And they keep rolling over, but I know that they're guaranteed by the taxing authority of the United States government. If we're talking now, though, about amounts that are $250,000 or below, I think that you're far better off right here and right now putting the money in a high-yielding savings account. So for smaller amounts of money, savings account for $250,000 or above that you want liquidity and the highest interest rate, I don't have a problem with treasury bills. You don't have the documents in place today to protect your tomorrows. You don't have a will. You don't have a living revocable trust. You don't have an advanced directive and durable power of attorney for health care. And you don't have a power of attorney for finances. You need those things, not just to make sure that your assets pass freely to your beneficiaries. You need those things for you. So here you are now and your spouse has died. Who, as you get older, who's going to write your checks for you? Who's going to pay your bills for you? If you get sick, you have an incapacity. Who's going to do that? So it's very important that you get the documents that are correct. Long-term care insurance, if you can afford it, will absolutely protect 
your little nest egg if one of you ends up in a nursing home. One out of three of you will spend some time in a nursing home after the age of 65. So look around, and if you decide to buy long-term care insurance, the perfect age to buy it is really in your 50s, but here's the key. You better know that you can afford a long-term care insurance premium, because they're not cheap, from the age of when you buy it all the way until at least 84, because it makes no sense for you to purchase it. Pay for it in your 50s, in your 60s, now here you are in your mid-70s, you can't afford it anymore, and then you drop it. You're better off just not buying it at all all. Let me just put it to you bluntly. You are to stay as far away from a reverse mortgage as you possibly can. There is not one situation out there where you should be getting a reverse mortgage. A reverse mortgage is based on the interest rates that are in effect right here and now. It's based on your age and it just makes no sense. If you own a home and you can't afford to stay in that home, with real estate prices as high as they are, could you just sell your house right now and either seriously downsize or there is nothing wrong with renting.